Oh boy, Womack well, Sports fans, Mike Kretz here. We're jam-packed tonight, so let's not waste any time. Fruta hosting Montrose. Let's get you out to Stoker right now. Big-time football matchup. If you watched Monday, you know we gave Fruta Wildcats offense the clock eater sticker for the way they just nickel and dime their way downfield. Clock control their specialty, as we saw Kaysen Stegelmeyer with the nice carry. That was Corbin Rao breaking free on third and five. A handful of third down conversions for the Wildcats in this one. Third and eight, no problem for Stegelmeyer. Uh, look at all that green he had in front of him there. But in the red zone, third and goal. This time Montrose comes up. Big and early question for Coach Ross. Wildcats going for it on fourth down, going to the air. Montrose defender gets a fingertip on it, turnover on downs. But that first drive was essentially eight minutes. Second quarter, Red Hawks first possession, gonna get stopped. Nice pursuit there from the Wildcats. Stop Blake's Griffin in his track. Uh, but we, we know Mertens knows how to roll the dice on fourth down. But how about the gang tackling there? Fourth and two, Demarion Lopez stopped well short. The Wildcats take over. And I was just complimenting Fruto on their ability to eat up the clock. Blinking, you're gonna miss this drive. Stegelmeyer with another solid carry into the second level. Makes a few defenders miss. He's off eventually. Rao is the one to punch it in on the quarterback keeper, putting the Wildcats up 7 0. Montrose looking for a response, and special teams comes into play. Maybe the Sun did too. The return gives Muff Noah Heine. He's there. The momentum bar for Fruta is full, and now getting packed in. Rao rolls right, makes a nice throw to Wyatt Sharp, who makes the catch. Now it's time to make a run. Sharp puts the Wildcats up 14 0 for the second week in a row. We've seen Montrose get punched in the mouth early, and things aren't getting any easier. Luke Bennett coming up with a nice tackle for a loss. Montrose forced a punt, and here comes Fruta. Corbin Rao quickly decides to pull it down and run it. That was a wise decision, too. A 15-yard scramble. Rule the fumble here, but Fruta recovers and keep on rolling. This time, it's the Wildcats implementing their counter game. Needs to make a defender miss the backfield. Breaking off another big game, and this one is one of those plays that Antonio talks about. You, you see who wants it. Who's going to win the race? Luke Bennett does, and all of a sudden, Fruta has a dominant 21-0 lead with under a minute and a half until half. Montrose needs some kind of any kind of momentum going into the locker room and they find it. Boy, we saw a couple of miscues on the kickoffs here. Uh, this ain't one of them. Austin Zimmer builds up a nice head of steam, finds a hole, and he is taking off Zimmer with a needed 80-yard return. Now Montrose needs to capitalize, and they go straight to the young man that carried the load for him last week, the returning wrestling heavyweight champ, Demarion Lopez. He's a load to take down on the mat and on the gridiron. On the last play of the half, Montrose gets something to cheer about when Lopez rumbles it in 21-7 as we jump into the second half, and it looks like Montrose might get that run game going. Blake Griffin on the third and eight moves the sticks, but here on fourth and four, a big time play by the Wildcats. Griffin runs to the edge and runs into a brick wall named Jake Kimbrough. Fruta would eventually get a field goal off this drive, making it 24-7 when I had to hit the road. Let's check the scoreboard. 30-14, Fruta. That's your final. It is not often you get a potential playoff game on the first day of September, but that was a feel out there. Up next for the Wildcats skyline, Montrose looking to rebound from a tough couple of weeks at Erie next weekend. And we're running